Hello, Paul McFadden here and welcome to the Property Success Podcast and I'm joined today with my guest Steve Hand and I can't wait for you to hear his story and the whole goal of this podcast is to inspire you because there's so many people who are just starting out in the property journey and by learning from others in terms of how they get started in a property journey and what they were able to overcome, some of their challenges, their successes, not only is it an incredibly inspiring story to hear about other people, but you're going to get so much from that on your own journey too, to help you get started. Or for those already in the property game, then who better to listen to and to learn from than others that have also been in the property game and gone through what you've probably gone through yourself as well, to be inspired, because that's the whole point of this podcast. Now, again, like I mentioned, today's podcast guest is <clears throat> Steve and Steve is also my business partner too with Express Mortgages and what I love about this here with what we have grown with our whole protege in the PMW community is the relationships that you get through that whole process and Steve was introduced to me by a mutual friend of ours and Steve and his wife Laura Jane came on board to work with us and through working from an educational point of view to learn more about property, especially already with their background of being an investor and being in the world of mortgages and finance, and just to see how they've been able to grow together and to do a lot more in the property journey. And then for us to come together as business partners and grow Express Mortgages, it's just been amazing to see. So for me, it's awesome to have my business partner and good friend, Steve. So welcome to the podcast, Steve. Thank you, Paul. Great introduction. Yeah, no, I'm looking <clears throat> forward to it. So why don't we get stuck into this from pre-protege before I got to know you um, about your your background, of course, in finance, but more importantly, as an investor. And, you know, and I know that there's a lot more to you that would be good for the listeners to to learn and find out. And then we can get into the, the property chat. Yeah, great stuff. So I came to see you. It was the end of February 2020. I remember that because it was the last one before lockdown. And it, it went into March, I think, the, the first couple of days of March. And before that, of course, I've been in property for what seems like an age. Uh, I'm 48 now, and I started in the world of property when ooh, I'll have been 25, so it was the year 2000. And I worked for somebody else on a commission-only basis. That was my first proper job as a self-employed mortgage advisor and did that for four years. And then we set up Express Mortgages in 2004. But in those four years, I, I learned a lot because at the time I had two jobs on the table. It was either the safe, secure route, which was the HFC bank, if I remember rightly, uh, with a salary back then. I think it was about 12 and a half grand. It just wow. shows how time yeah. has moved on. And then I had this like commission only role, which the opportunity was for two to three times that wage, the earning potential, but of course, no basic salary. And if I wasn't living with my mum and dad, I probably would have took the HFC one. But me being me, I'm not uber risky, but I thought I, I want the chance at least. I want the chance to make some decent money, what was decent money back then. So I'll take the uh, the mortgage point job. And that's what I did. And uh, the, the owner was very much uh, a sort of um, proper old school businessman. You know, he did rule with an iron fist, but if you worked hard and you weren't the firm good money, he rewarded you handsomely. So that was some great grounding for me. And after about a year and a half, uh, Stuart wanted me to manage one of the other branches. So I went down to Birmingham, managed that one. And that was my first experience of having staff underneath me. And I learned a lot. There was people there that were like the same age as my dad and it just felt daunting at first. But um, I got over that and uh, yeah, performed uh, pretty well. And then we decided to set up our own brokerage. So that's where you and, and our fellow business partner and good friend of yours, Paul Rawson, I guess you guys came together and, and kicked off with Express Mortgages. So maybe tell us a little bit about that, because I know that when you kicked that off, it was around about the time where everything went in chaos in the market, wasn't it? So let me have a little chat around that and how you guys were able to, to navigate through that and your own thought process there. And then, of course, you know, that can bring us up to you getting involved and in doing more property stuff yourself. Yeah, so... um. Well, four years before that, I started buying my first property. So I, I bought my first property quite early on and I was about to buy uh, a new BMW and my boss, Rob, said to me, my manager said, Steve, instead of spending all that money on the car, why don't you buy a house and have the car? And I didn't quite compute it at the time. But what he meant was buy the property and the positive cash flow that you get in from the property put towards the car and you can have both. 
Anyway, I got a taste for it. So I never ended up buying the car as much as I'm a petrol head. I bought three houses quite quickly and then it just went up from there and started building my portfolio. But um, yeah, Express Mortgages, that was interesting because we opened the doors September 2004 and Three years later, if I remember rightly, there was those huge queues outside of Northern Rock when there was a run on the bank and people <laughs> wanted the savings back. So we had to start the business from scratch. And in that time, in those three years, we'd built up enough um, customer base revenue to, to have five of us there. So we employed three other people. And so we built up some nice momentum, started to take some money back out again, which was good. And then suddenly the crap hit the fan. So that really tested us because we'd not really experienced that before. The year later in 2008, Lehman's Brothers went down. There was a catastrophe in the States and uh, there was the credit crunch. There was the Great Recession. And yeah, that, um, that was a very challenging period, I remember, because although we'd saved some money in the bank, we had some retained profits. We didn't spend tomorrow's dinner money, so to speak. Uh, you were getting the calls for inquiries, but there was no like products to give people, no mortgages to give people. In the buy-to-let world, it went down to two lenders, if I remember, uh, Birmingham Midshires and TMW. Um, and we were like, this is so frustrating. We're getting, customers want to take our service, our products or service, but um, we've got nothing to give them. And so the money coming into the brokerage was less than what was going out. And it was just a ticking time bomb. But fortunately, we got we got through that period and uh, and things started to ease up a little bit. And then from 2010 onwards, that's when we went on a, a sort of build and scale program. So the business just kept on growing from there, which has been amazing to see. And that's testament to what, you know, you were able to do through challenging times, isn't it? it what's, it's, it's what makes or breaks someone, isn't it? And we face these times through all of our journey and we have to overcome those to not only level up ourselves, but to see what we're truly capable of. And this is what I love about, you know, yourself in the sense of getting started in property before 2008, going through that and seeing all the chaos that that created to then getting back in the game of buying property. Because with many people who I know who got involved in property pre-2008, they get hit so hard to the point that they just went, no, nope, property is no longer for me. Mm. And it took them a long time to get back into the game. Oh, yeah. There was a period in 2009 where we get, we were getting offered properties from developers and 30% below the uh, the market value. And the developers even said to us, "You can ha whatever the bank value them at, you can have them at 30% below. And we were like, happy days. Now, with hindsight, I'd have gone and bought a shed load. But, of course, you know, that risk appetite... So um, we, we bought quite a few, though, and we kept hold of them. And although the values took a while to, to creep back up, I think it was about, what, 10 years or so in, in most areas, at least you're getting that positive cash flow along the way. And interest rates fell right through the floor. So that, that was really helping. So, um, yeah, I learned some cracking lessons. We did take on a business partner, which, of course, you know about, which didn't go <laughs> so well. But, you know, that you have to go through these, these pain points and uh, that that was designed to sort of build and scale the business with his skill set. We had a good few years of growth. And then as is what I've come to learn is more common than you think, director disputes and, and acrimonious behavior between the few of you it is pretty, pretty common. I think it's always <clears throat> common with entrepreneurial people or you know, business owners, because, you know, I talk about it a lot where the beginning of relationships always the honeymoon period, isn't it? Any yeah. relationship. And one of my favorite quotes that I always talk about is iron sharpens iron. Mm. So it's good to have disputes. It's good to have, you know, um, disagreements as such, providing that you can work around a solution that's going to be beneficial for the company mm -hmm. and for people not to get emotionally caught up with a lot of it, which mm -hmm. is a challenge for many people, especially when there is difference of opinion. Mm -hmm. But as long as everyone's still aligned and when people are no longer aligned and that tends to then spiral that's kind of the end of a relationship and it can get messy, can't it? You it, know, it, it can. Yeah. And, and I guess with, with hindsight, what you would try and do is mediate a lot sooner. Like, because I understand, like I've put myself in his shoes, which you, you know, you've got to do it at some point to think to draw a line under it. And I kind of understand where, where he came from. I do understand. And uh, differences of opinion. He wanted one way. We wanted a slightly different way. And, and that was that. So, yeah, I'd have liked to have not gone through three years of lawyer's bills 
but then it's only money. And of course, we're motivated to make that back, aren't we? So that that happened. We drew a line under it. And uh, and of course, we met you at the same time. So that was a nice little transition. And that was uh, just over three years ago now. Yeah, no, I remember when you, you guys got in touch and, um, and, and we had a call and I was quite excited about uh, working with you because for me, it's great to work with people who are brand new, have got no experience in property whatsoever because they're a blank canvas. But sometimes it's working with someone who's been involved in property where it's a bit more challenging. But I did not get that with you guys. You were very open, receptive. You were like, yep, yeah, we're in the game. Mm -hmm. We arrange finance, we've got a portfolio, but we're open to learn more and to get educated and learn new strategies and take things to the next level. And it was always a breath of fresh air for me to, to work with both of you, you and, and, and Laura Jane. And so from you coming along to Protege, what was the steps? What, what was what was that trigger point for you to want to get further education and, and come and learn more? Yeah, good point. I think because I've always got that mindset of I want to better myself, I want to stretch for that next level. And, and even though... I'd built a portfolio. It wasn't a huge one. There was 13 properties there. We'd, we'd bought some land that we'd got planning gain on. So I knew a little bit, but I, I knew that I was playing a small game and it could have been a lot bigger. And uh, also Laura Jane was in um, the corporate world. She was a project manager and we'd had our little boy Bodie and she didn't want to go back into that environment. So I said, well, hang on, you, you've got the skill set of project management. We've got a portfolio here as well. Why don't we both learn together? And then we can scale that and grow that and learn new things. So that that was what we decided to do. And then you're in the room with other people and you, you hear other stories and you think, wow, a 13 property portfolio. And I've been doing this for what? The best part of 20 years. That is fractional compared to where I could be. So I'm really excited about, about growing. And the, the probably the biggest takeaway that I've had from it all was, was that word leverage. And it was just new to me. I thought... I've never been one of those people where I think I know it all or I've not got much to learn. I'm a perennial learner. And I looked at it, I looked around the room, listened to everything, soaked it all up, and I thought, wow, there's something I've not been doing here. I've not been using the power of other people's money, leveraging the investors, all that you talk about with property sourcing, the off-market. I didn't even know about that because I'm so programmed to be dealing with right move and the on-market purchases the traditional way, you save up your 25%, you go and buy, <laughs> buy to let. And uh, it, it was crazy. And um, even though we arranged property finance, it had predominantly been uh, buy to lets and main residence mortgages until a few years ago. And then we got into the specialist finance market ourselves. And that's when I knew it was totally possible if that was your strategy to build 100 plus portfolios and go down yeah. that route. Love it. And what was your experience coming along and, and I guess spending five days with us through Property Protege? You know, what was what was your biggest take home? And, you know, and, and then we can maybe get into the stuff you've been involved in since. Yeah. So being part of the, the group for, for the week, it was just the energy in the room. You, you probably hear this a lot. You, the energy is just something different. than You're just not used to, you know, in the working environment, even though I'm one of the owners, the, the I thought, wow, coming here, I can bring this energy to our company and, and make it better. So that, that was the, the biggest takeaway. I'm surrounded by people. I'm in a mastermind group of people that um, want to push on themselves. They want to be better versions of themselves. And um, the biggest takeaway was a, a close-knit mastermind group with the power of leverage and the community and the, the ongoing learnings that you've got from each other. Love it. And off the back of that, before we decided to, or before I reached out, because I remember it was a bit of a conversation when I was chatting and, you know, my background being in property for so long as well, having used many brokers, and, you know, I, I was looking for a broker. I was like, it just makes sense from the amount of clients that we've got coming through the PMW doors. They're all looking for finance. They need it. And I've always been protective of who I work with, wanting to find the right people to work with. Because if you're going to pass a referral to someone, you know, people are going to go, oh, well, you pass that referral. Mm. So for me, it was like, I want to make sure I've got the right broker to work with. So not only having you coming in and learning through Protege and then applying that, which we'll talk about. For me, watching afar, just observing, observing and seeing you and Express organizing mortgages and helping other clients, I'm like, well, Clearly, they're getting results, which is the most important thing. But two, they're getting creative away the, around the ways that they finance deals as well, which mm -hmm. allows a lot of investors to 
you know, put less money in mm -hmm. and also be a bit more creative with different financing through bridging and development and getting involved in bigger projects that people didn't even think was possible and leveraging different ways of finance. Mm -hmm. I thought I, I need to be talking to these guys because I knew that you were going through that that split with an ex business partner and going through three years of legals for that to come to an end, and then for me to turn around and say, "Hey, do you want another business partner?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. So we'll maybe get into that, but off mm -hmm. the back of Protege and growing your network, um, you know, being involved in that community, you know, you've done a number of investments and you're involved in a number of projects with others as well. Yeah, well, you talked me into it, Paul. You see, I was, I was happily sat there in the main residence. Mortgages was coming down. Nearly paid the mortgage off. And it was like, right, this guy's just now planted the seed and he's told me what's possible if we decide to raise our mortgage again or just sell the thing. So that's what we decided to do. I talked it into Laura Jane. Fortunately, she was very receptive. And we sold the main residence. And that was later on in 2021 and put the money into projects and then I became an investor. So sometimes these things happen that you don't necessarily set out to do. Uh, I was quite happy arranging mortgages, doing the finance for people and stuff like that. And then I thought, this isn't ticking all the boxes. I feel there's something missing here. And uh, again, you, you hear what you're doing, what other people are doing in the room and you think, right, I want a piece of this. I'm quite a competitive guy and I want to like, I want to join the club. So um, 48 with a six pack as well. Have you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I don't, that, that comes from my, my childhood, that competitive <laughs> brothers and athletics background. <laughs> but no, it's, it's just so, so good to be around people that um, are of similar mindset, I guess, and want to push on and it's a healthy competition. You know, it's not a kind of, ego thing and look at me it's like it is inspiration encouraging each other so yeah yeah and you're involved in a number of projects bigger projects as well with other people within the community too as an investor as you have said and it's exciting to see because you know you share that journey um on your instagram as well and you know you do regular videos of being on you know different sites and different projects you're working on as well and it's it's just amazing to see yeah that, i do love it I, there's something about i mean uh, um Jason was talking before about finding a passion and stuff. I, I've, I think I've always had a passion for property and uh, maths <laughs> and finance. So I would just not really found my calling with maths. And I guess within property and property finance, it's, it's kind of wrapped up in there. And uh, I do like being around people. I like helping people that like leading people, which you get to do with a team and uh, being part of the, the projects as an investor and bringing other investors on board which helps out with another income stream. It feels more, uh, a bit more entrepreneurial. So that, that's all, all part of the journey. And then very recently, I've had people reach out to me because they want to learn a little bit from my experience. And I thought, well, I want to help people, I want to give back as well. It's another income stream. It's a win-win for everybody. So why not go down this path and just have devote some of my time to, to some one-to-one -one coaching? So that's become a bit of a thing as well recently. Love it. And I guess it's incredibly fulfilling. It is for, for me, and I know it is for you too, especially with Express, who writes so much business for PMW clients. And it's not just PMW clients. As we know, we, we help all investors as well as all people who want to organize and arrange their residential mortgage and stuff. But in the PMW community, and we see how many wins that's getting posted inside the groups and the different deals are working on. And for Express organizing their finance and funding, you must see, and of course we do, but you must see so many great opportunities, great deals and things getting done that it's great to know that you play a part in that with the creative financing and so forth. Oh, oh it is. And it's wonderful to see somebody's journey and people go at different speeds to get that and everyone's got different motivations, but to see somebody grow, like come into the tribe quite, quite new, like Chris before, and already is, you know, he's going at it hammer and tongs, isn't he? And he's got a he's got a goal and a and a clear vision, and uh, he wants to get to his hundred plus properties. And you know, hats off to him and helping people like that um, scale and suggest certain routes, creative strategies that weren't on their radar before to then go ahead and and make better versions of themselves and and you know grow and create um, portfolios or get into more developments. It's uh, it is good. It's very fulfilling. Yeah, absolutely. And what's some of the, maybe some of the challenges that you've faced in, 
how you've overcame them throughout your journey and it could be a simple thing through business or it could be a specific deal you know certain things that's maybe because of course it's amazing to be working on great deals and you know have the vision of growing the business but the challenges is the ones that like we mentioned at the very beginning make or break us oh. is there ones that stand out that you think it'd be good and you got lessons learned that others would kind of benefit from do you know the biggest one or the one that gives me the most strength is uh, is the litigation yeah go, going through that because w we faced a, a challenge one day where it's like this guy's gonna take us to the high court he's gonna really can i swear of course you can <laughs> he's gonna really fuck us over and like he had massively deep pockets we didn't and uh, i just thought fucking hell this is it right I've been putting so much emphasis on building up my equity and building up my wealth. And uh, all of it, when I did the numbers, could be taken away. And that's when I just thought, fucking hell, I've got to let go of this. And that was it. And then shortly after it uh, it came good, we mediated and, and that was that. So I think that's that's one of the biggest strengtheners that, that I've had, I would say. Um, there's, there's other stuff as well along the way. There's like, and at that time, God, my dad died. My my little baby boy was born. So there was like three big things going on in my life that just suddenly happened. And yeah, it does it does push you to your limits. But then you watch things on TV like like the Beckham thing recently, and I thought, God, that's nothing. That's chicken feed. Or you hear somebody's story about a serious illness, and you think, actually, what I've gone through is nothing. You know. So, but I know it's all relative and stuff like that. But you have to use these. Uh, these experiences and challenges to to really really strengthen you I think and give you a give you a fight and a fuel and a you know a new motivation how much do you think your background in terms of sports and being athletic and being competitive how much do you think that that there and keeping yourself in good shape and you know get the discipline around that how much <clears> of that do you think helps you on your whole focus and your business journey and you know just your your overall mental health I guess yeah, I'd, massively for me. Um, yeah, one of one of my I guess regrets, even though it's not really my my choice, is that uh, the environment that I was in at school was was decent. It was competitive, but wasn't at the level that if it could have been a higher level, if it could have been in a bigger pond, I just question like, could I have gone a little bit further? Could I have been a professional athlete? That those kind of questions because. I think the thing is you, you rise to the level of who's around you, don't you? And if you've not got anyone to really take you higher, uh, then you'll kind of stay at that level. So I remember in high school, I uh, I lost my first cross-country race, came second, I was gutted. And then I made a, a, a plan with myself never to lose again, <laughs> even though you do naturally. But most of the time I won 800 metres, 1,500 metres and, and cross-country. That was, that was my thing. And then I went to run for the county and uh, I couldn't run in my events. The coach said, you've got to run in the 3000 meter steeplechase. So I did. And I looked around me and right, oh, great. There's only, there's only three of us. Um, and you kind of size each other up, don't you? And I'm looking at this, uh, this lad thinking, God, there's nothing on him. He's tiny. He's just, he's not even that, you know, athletic looking. He's quite short. Uh, and anyway, he kicked my ass. So he beat me by a whole lap. And that's when I realized, I thought, this is county level, this isn't town level, it's another step. And I don't think I'm of this ilk, I wasn't geared up for that. So, but it's made me passionate about my son now, Bodhi, and making sure that I um, navigate it as well as I can, but put him in the right environments that's gonna foster a uh, healthy competition and get him to be the best version of himself. So I think growing up with uh, two brothers, and my dad did help, my dad was an athlete, uh, played rugby and athletics so it was kind of in his blood and passed that on to us a bit and it there is definitely a correlation with that in business because you you have this sort of this fight this healthy fight that you want to put to work in something else yeah but it's still a part of me like I can't I, I kind of put running to one side for many years and then had a couple of knee injuries knee uh, um surgeries and Dave, that we know, Dave Ashley, died in a, in a fighter jet, uh, unfortunately. And Dave kind of uh, got me back into running just before he died. I thought, right, I've got to like just see how good I can get at the age that I'm at, approaching 50. So I've got a couple of running goals at the moment. But yeah, it just gives me a bit of focus and um, 
something outside of of the of the working world that I feel I need and it keeps me sharp. Yeah, I think uh, Dave inspired so many of us, mm-hmm. you know, and it was heartbreaking to receive the news that what happened and to see someone like him who was so motivated, so driven, just to be the best version of him. Mm. You know, he was the closest person that I knew that was like David Goggins, yeah. you know, hardcore in terms of how he pushed himself on a daily basis, his morning routines and his discipline. And, you know, and he, that transferred from not only his own personal life, but into his own business as well. And and I guess that, that extreme sports type thing or extreme... You know, because he, he was in his extreme sports and doing his crazy things. Of course, he's an NEF fight, fighter pilot, you know. He, the, the rush and the buzz of that, of course, it wants you to do more of that. I was fortunate enough to be in a fitness group, in a fitness WhatsApp group with Dave. And uh, he's so humble as well, you know. And just going out for his morning runs, having the crack with us on the videos and uh, just really encouraging. And, uh, yeah, he was an inspiration because I thought, geez, you're... At the time, I think he might be 49 or, or something like that, 49, 50. But you're the fittest one in this room and there's like 21-year-olds and that are ripped. And man, you're, you're a real uh, inspiration. So I, I thought to myself, right, let's just, let's just see. And it's a good kind of um, leveler, I think, for my son, Bodie. Um, so I've got this little deal with him where when he leaves school, whether it's age 11 or 13, I've, I've kind of said 13, um, you've got to beat dad. And, yeah. and dad will be... 55 then so you've got to beat me because he is quite you can tell he's sports he's athletic um that's the deal you've got to beat the old guy <laughs> <laughs> love it and i guess that with um your own journey as it is at the moment of course you've got big goals and ambitions around express mortgages in the sense of where that's going and um, but more importantly your own personal goals is there stuff that keep you driven and motivated um for the next chapter of of steve yeah, yeah. Uh, so business goals, I would, if I'm really honest, I would like to grow. I don't actually know why. Maybe it's a little bit of a fuck you, <laughs> but I'd really like to get an eight figure business under my belt. I think, why not? So uh, we, we reached seven figures, as you know, not too long ago. And uh, yeah, mul- multi- do it in stages, of course, you know, mul- multi seven figure, then, then get to the eight because that, that scares me a little bit. It's like, that's probably a hundred plus person business. And it's like, wow, I'm uh, responsible for all these people. And uh, and then it gives me the opportunity and the privilege to create a team of leaders. And and so that, that motivates me a lot. Uh, coaching other people, helping other people achieve things that they didn't think was possible and giving them at least 10 times the value that they're paying for that service. I think that motivates me a lot. Um, to always be healthy and fit. I, that sounds a bit nebulous, but, um, you know, so my, my dad was an athlete, but then in his mid-40s, he had diabetes and he died of a heart attack, actually, age 70. But he kind of, his diet slipped and he didn't look after himself. So um, that motivates me very much to stay in shape. So health and fitness is forefront of my mind. So I want to be aging like not be your typical 78 year old you know i want to be like a fit healthy uh, athlete stroke yogi be able to not have aches and pains like most people do in their retired life you know oh god don't take up jiu-jitsu because i've <laughs> constantly <get> aches and pains <laughs> <laughs> No, I love it. That's good principles to to live by, and uh, you know, and it's great that you're you're thinking that way, and you've got that that focus and that drive. And you know, one of the things you just mentioned are that whole yeah, I'm going to prove that I can do this. Like that's fuel. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the athlete inside you. It's the athlete that's transferring from the physical activity into the business activity, and you need to use that to get that fuel to drive you, isn't it? Yeah. And I think like from many conversations that we have, you know, motivation is not going to get you there. No. You know, what athlete wakes up in the morning who wants to get up earlier than anyone else to go and put in the reps to be the the number one or being the 1%, you know, Mm -hmm. it's it's very rare. So it gets you to push to a whole new way of doing things and have different disciplines. It's going to move you towards getting those results. And 
I guess with a lot of the things you're talking about and your goals and your vision, your focus going forward, it, it keeps you in alignment to be disciplined in order to get the results. Yeah, dis discipline is massive, isn't it? It's uh, I feel more proud of those mornings when I get up and I do have them, even though I do really enjoy training. I like training, but I do have days where I think I can't be asked or especially like in the winter, it's dark, it's wet, it's cold. I could easily be doing something else. But when I come back from the gym, the feeling I have is just awesome. And that's with me all day. So that motivates me to do it again and again. So I tend to, rightly or wrongly, I tend to put that health and fitness above everything else. I wake up, I meditate, I do my exercise, but I'm ready to start work and then I can crack on and, and be more focused. I know there's things, great session, that last session we've just had here. I know there's things I need to be doing that will make me better and uh and i've jotted them down i am gonna have the discipline to do them so it's that it's that forever wanting to better yourself and be a greater version of yourself that really motivates me yeah many people guilty because you normally fall into that unless you have high performance parents or high performance mentors at a young age so for me you know personally i've made all the mistakes until you start to find out the power of having a good morning routine, mm. starting with something so simple with getting up at the same time consistently at, as a discipline. You know, a lot of people want discipline, but the only way to get that is to do the thing you want to become disciplined at over and over and over again. Yeah. So if you're just getting up at a specific time and if you win that battle, it's like, okay, well, you're up with enough time so you're not running around being rushed to get to where you need to go, whether it's work, to run your business. You're getting up to have some mindfulness, isn't it? You mentioned mm -hmm. meditation or for me, it's um, a bit of that, but I like to just reflect and have a bit of morning study, you know, to get my, my mind start to switch on for the day ahead mm -hmm. rather than for most people. And I know it was for me a lot in my early days, my journey, I don't know if you can resonate or not, is a lot of just being reactive because nowadays yeah. people just pick up the phone. It's the first thing that they touch and the last thing they put down before they go to their bed. Yeah. And as soon as they wake up, it's looking at messages, it's stuff that's getting, you know, on social media, you name it. Mm -hmm. And some of the messages can just set you off track. Oh, and massive. your morning's just lost and you wonder why people are so reactive or you're a shitty mood or whatever that may be. And for me, if you get that morning discipline right, you know, and I know it's not always possible to get your, your training session in in the morning, but where you can, you get mm. it done because we all know, because I know health is a big thing, we both got that in common, that if you leave that to later on in the evening, chances are it's probably not happening. It's not going to happen. <laughs> no. Unless no. you're incredibly disciplined. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a tough grind to make happen. Because I do, I enjoy uh, working out in the evenings. Um, it's, it's one of the things that I prefer, especially going to do my, my jiu-jitsu and stuff. You know, there's, you know, but I also know that when I'm not able to do certain evenings because other things are on, it needs to be done in the morning yeah. to make sure it's going to get done. Yeah. So I guess that discipline and having a good morning routine plays a big part and i guess that that there is what's helped you too yeah yeah it, it does and it's uh just little wins as well like uh you know getting a bit of sunlight it's so easy to just crack on isn't it S stare at your screen crack on with all the emails and the work that you've got to do but t having the discipline it sounds weird this but the discipline to leave the computer go and ground yourself go and stand on the grass for like 10 minutes while the sun's out and just get a little bit of natural vitamin d stuff like that and then come back to it so just trying to weave in these good practices where i can and uh, be mindful about what i'm eating um as much as i would love to go out and have a few drinks tonight i'm not going to allow myself now that this feels like punishment and me being a martyr to some people but i'll still have the crack with people i'll still have a few drinks as in like water or non-alcoholic beers but like you and i paul we both know that our sleep is massively disrupted when we have a drink before bed yeah like one or two in the afternoon isn't too bad here and there for me i can get away with that but like yeah I, i'll just take joy in the fact that i've woke up tomorrow fresh and i'm ready to attack the day and and really embrace the learnings of tomorrow that's great so anyone getting started in their journey you know what would be some of the things that you would say to them who are just maybe getting started or those that are maybe in the game and maybe find themselves in a little bit of a 
you know, a plateau or or knowing that they're capable of so much more. And I'm sure they're going to be inspired listening to this anyway, especially when we talk about some of the things that is unspoken around health and discipline. But what's some of the things you maybe recommend to them or would suggest based on your own experiences? So, yeah, the advice I would give to people is um, be honest with yourself. Know what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, and don't be afraid to outsource, offload some of those tasks. But, you know, we, we can't be good at everything, can we? We've got to hone down on the best two or three things that we're good at. And uh, so I would delegate a little bit sooner, having my time again. I would embrace risk more. And I would, um, yeah, I would, I would go after it, be honest with myself, spend time reflecting, spend more time reflecting and decide what is it that I want to do and what's my big vision. Get really clear on that and then go after it. Uh, hammer and tongs, but take time out to rest I recommend that because society doesn't tell us this, does it? It talks about like work, 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 but you've also got to have some downtime and then we can recharge and go again. Love it. Good stuff. Look, as always, you know, I love to have these conversations. I know it's going to inspire many people, but for those that are watching or listening, how can they reach out and connect with you? Oh, Express Mortgages. Uh, I'm on Instagram. So um, Steve Hand uh, on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Express Mortgages, of course, you'll you'll find me there. Great stuff. And as always, we'll link off to Steve's Instagram and his other websites as well for you to connect and connect with him and the, the description and all that stuff of the show notes. But more importantly, if you've got questions, pop it into the comments. And of course, I'll go in there and respond. And I'm sure Steve will be in there to respond as well. So all the best and bye for now. <laughs>